I don't really have a specific niche or anything like that. Yeah. What do you recommend on it? either finding one or where to kind of start I, to help I, always, I always tell people it's so funny i really this is this is a question that people ask all the time like, i figure <laughs> oh like like i just i talked to in fact i was speaking with someone today christina and i told her and i said look i can't talk to people for on the phone one-on-ones because these questions get asked I keep repeating myself over and over and over again so this is a great question because hopefully other people will hear it and then, you know, like I can answer it one time. When you're starting off, remember this. Okay, we are going to be doing primarily business development. What I do is business development, okay? I am not meeting with the government and I don't, I'm not the technical expert. <laughs> okay. The people that you're talking to, the government are not the technical expert. When you're doing BD, you're not speaking to the government's technical experts. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so what I mean by that is, regardless of the industry, construction, IT, professional services, you're not going to be speaking on behalf of that specific technical aspect of it. Yeah, I'm gonna be speaking on the government contracting side of things. Right, yeah, correct. Right. So your job would be to learn, which is what you're doing, the government contracting side. You're gonna learn the rules, you're gonna learn who you should be talking to, what you should be saying, right? That kind of stuff. So you're gonna be learning the right people to call and what to say. And then you're gonna be the ones helping set up the meetings and facilitate those interactions. Right, so that right. when it's time to talk technical, you bring your team, to the government's team that talks the technical jargon. But up until that time, nothing you're doing is technical. If you just heard what JR said, he found a source of SOT, right? For gen right. janitorial. He's looking for an 8A company to match with a janitorial company. He doesn't say he has the expertise on any of that stuff. True, no, no, yeah, that's right. So you don't have to have that expertise. And the whole point of the, the story is that, meaning, it doesn't matter the industry when you're coming as a consultant. It matters the best company that you can work with. So, yeah, so the yeah. best okay. person that you can partner up with who has all of the things that you need to help you be successful, to help them be successful, meaning this. They have people on your team that can support proposal writing because we're going to okay. have to do that. They're going to need people on their team that know how to estimate the job because you're going to have to do that. Right. They're going to have people on their team that are willing to make the commitment to meet with the government agents because you're going to have to do that. And in the course, I have a list, like a checklist of things that you want them to be responsible for. And so you'll see that in the consultant agreement. We have. I'm, I already made the notes. Trust me, I'm going okay. through it. I sh I'd show you my screen right now. No, 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 don't worry. I believe you. I believe you. But I, I believe you. So in the consulting agreement, we say, like they have to agree to certain things as well because. Oh, okay, gotcha. For you to be successful, like if you set up a meeting with a government agent and they don't make time to go to the meeting, waste time. You, waste time. Right. right. So you have to say to them, hey, look, I'm going to help. I'm going to go out in front and lead, right, with, you know, the, our best foot forward. But once I get to the point where we set up a meeting, like when I call you guys to come to this meeting, like you have to show up because you guys are the technical experts, right? You can right. only you can sell your company and what you, you know, what you have your experience and your past performance, blah, 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 all that stuff. Gotcha. All right. Um, so, another so, question. So let, oh, with that mindset, let's look at, okay, the best possible company. Okay. Gotcha. Let's not look okay. at industry. Again, for a consultant, let's look at the best possible company that you have access to that can check those boxes. Okay. okay you want to ask something else. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I cut you off. No, 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 no. You're good. So with that in mind, do I even want to stick with companies that stay in the same state as me? 
and also contracts that are in the same state as me or does it does that not really matter of course i i would want to find like you know a client that would be able to travel to wherever the job might be um you don't have to work with starting clients. off you don't have to work with clients that are in the same state my client is in rhode island i'm in florida remember everything now is virtual true but i do recall you saying in the course that you because, still want to be able to when you set up a meeting you still want to be able to go there because, in person because, remember, to build that relationship yeah when we do meetings to the agencies we go in person okay so when we meet with the go and again i fly up to meet with them you know i like i was just in rhode island last week two weeks ago whatever i think you know last week whatever i think last week or two weeks ago i was up in rhode island the entire week so it's not you know, I was up there for a week. I met with everybody. I met with the team. We talked. You know, we went around. We looked at some of our projects and all that kind of stuff. But my last couple of meetings with the government have all been like Zoom meetings. Okay. Even tomorrow, we have a, a Zoom industry day on Zoom. So really, nowadays, I don't, you know, I don't even know if the government will allow you to have one-on-one -on -one meetings face-to-face -face right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. So that doesn't matter to me. I'm not, that to me is not a so big don't, factor. Okay, so don't limit yourself to where you would find a client and also don't limit yourself to where you would even find a uh, project for that. No, client. because the client, right? And again, let's go back to making the client a priority. The, the client is going to tell you the area that they cover. Gotcha. Okay. So then they're going to be the ones that set that parameter not you okay and really and again I, you know i was telling someone today the same thing is really what you want to do is if you had your, your pick of the litter i would pick the one that had the most revenue the most past performance right the one that had the biggest team okay and that was the most capable actually doing the stuff that the government asked for so I would say, for example, right, go back to my video where we talk about IDVs. So okay. like I would come, I would pre-qualify anyone I decide to do business with and make sure, like, let's say whatever, let's say IT. I would go okay. now, um, or no, let's talk about what JR just mentioned, the janitorial stuff, right? So right. let's say he's looking at this janitorial project for whatever, three buildings, some millions of dollars i would make sure like let's say if i was working with a janitorial company can they meet these requirements if they can't meet them you don't want to be a, you don't want to represent them makes sense yeah like you said you want to work with the best you want to work with the best you can't what are you gonna what are you gonna do have them go out and get fifty thousand dollar contracts no, nah. I see what you mean. That I'm being honest with you. Like, if you're gonna spend your time and effort, don't do that. I got you. The don't reason why I even because I remember in the course, and I'm happy you actually put it. There's actually a part where you kind of show people how to make, you know, their first couple thousand dollars. Right. I put that. Yeah, because of Maria did that. Yeah, earn your first five k. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> I, I did it because of Maria. Because Maria said, Eric, you got to come back down to earth. <laughs> yeah, Maria brings me back down to earth. I'm I'm like on Mars somewhere. Maria, shout out to Maria for real, then. Huh? Shout out to Maria. Shout out to Maria. She's the goat, right? She brings me back to earth. So you know we uh, but and and it, listen, that's great experience because I'll tell you this, because of Maria doing that, were you on a call last night? Yeah, a little bit. I I, I was. I had to all go right, to so work, like, so like I was so, there and I wasn't there. All right, so let me let me just let me just show you how that worked out. So because Maria got those smaller contracts, we were able to well, or she was able to parlay that into another contract, small contracts with another one of our students. Okay. And then when another student got a potential sole source contract. They use Maria's little jobs as past performance to give them the credibility they need to get that other sole source. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So it, 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 it became like it three people out. benefited from it. Okay. I see. So it did. So it, it did work out. 
So it was, so it, it did end up being a good thing. And that's why, like, I do have a video <laughs> where I did say to someone, I think she's still on here, American Elevators, where I said, listen, okay, I know that I always talk big numbers, but no, thirty, forty thousand dollars contracts are not bad. You know, we should, we're going to be proud of every contract that we get. So I, 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 I had, I retracted it. I don't want people to think that a thirty thousand dollars contract is a bad thing. No, I said. So I do have a video where I said that. Okay. No, yeah, that, that's true. But my my thing is, I just but, like the um, I like your ambition. I like the mindset of instead of if you're going to go the consultant route. Why start off small when you can start off big? Because you do have a student in the course that you did an interview, where, I, yeah, her first her first uh, contract was worth fifty million. Her first, yeah, her first client wanted fifty million contract, right? Exactly. So I don't even can't even think of what no, no, twenty five percent. I'm not saying but, but still, I'm not saying that true, true but, but whatever. Listen, look, what I would do, okay, and this is what I tell everyone. If I were gonna do a consultant, right? I would go, and where are you at? Oh, you're by, you're by me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're by me. I forgot. You're by me. You're out in Naples. Yeah. Yep. Southwest Florida, Listen, Naples, man. We have. Okay, this is what I would do. All right, this is Maria's jewel. All right, we gonna call okay. it. We gonna call it. We gonna call it the Maria game plan. Right. Awesome. So, and Jody did it, and it worked really well. So he found. So it's the same thing that Jr. is doing. Which is, okay. you find a con you find an opportunity coming up, <clears throat> and okay. then you use that to find a consultant client. Because now, when you call someone to represent them, you said, "Hey, we have a five million dollar, ten million dollar opportunity on okay. the table. I would love to represent you as a your business development person to help put together all of the paperwork and everything to get you qualified for this opportunity." People okay. don't get awesome. phone calls like that every day. That's true. <laughs> That's what you have to do. Now, we did that, last... by the way, Maria and I did that a month ago. There was a big contract coming up for NASA for a Cape Canaveral right down the street from us. Right. Okay. And we called okay. Maria called or emailed 10 eight A's and she got four callbacks. We had two or three meetings and we ended up getting someone just like that. And we're working with the guy today. In fact, Maria's contract she just picked up was with that 8A we met last month. So we've already nice. sold source with that guy within a month. Okay. Awesome. awesome. All right. I think I was, I think you just answered the question. I was going to say, how would you find out how much an opportunity is worth though? No, no. If you look, if they, they has it on there. It's published a lot of times. They're published. Uh, okay. Because I but, figure like, would I filter it as sole source listen, or? Go listen. Look at Soul Source. Look, I mean, look at sources. Look at source of sauce and RFIs, because no one is looking at that. I'm telling you, you guys listening to me, this is the biggest, the big. I'm telling you, look at that stuff. Just like what Jr. said, no one is looking at this stuff. Make sure, like that, no one has on their radar. I can show you. Like I pulled one down today. Okay. Hold on. Matter of fact, I might just walk y'all over here. I put one down today with my partner, and we had one come out for the Navy where I'm working at. In fact, Lisef, which she's not on here. She doesn't usually get on IG, but she sent it to me. It's for the Rhode Island area, $240 million, right? And wow. I'm already the prime GC on that base. Like, my $11 million in contracts <laughs> I picked up the last two months came – on that those two bases and they just put out a source of stuff for 240 million and i said to my guy he's like oh this is perfect for us we meet all of the criteria so we're responding we have another guy that's part of our team that's responding so there's gonna be two of us responding that we know each other that's what you <laughs> <is. laughs> okay okay so, hey i wrote it down look at uh soul source and uh rfis Source of sot, source of sot. Oh, source of sot. Sorry about that. Yeah, source of sot. So look at source of sot and RFIs. Listen, but that's what you're going to use to take to your new potential client. Okay. Go back and listen to what Jared just said. He just said he's in San Fred, three buildings, sanitizing. Look at that. No, we'll do. But th again, see, he's looking at places that are close to him. So that's why I just but wanted to know like, what it makes sense. Listen, 
look at stuff at Tyndall and Eglin Air Force Base. Oh yeah, I know. I I've seen some uh, on the East Coast in uh, Broward, Tyndall, Miami. Eglin. You have um, uh, what's the place in Alabama where they're doing um, Alabama? Huntsville, huh? Huntsville. I was gonna say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All rockets are coming out of Huntsville. They're putting stuff out of Huntsville every right. day. And but Tyndall's huge. My guy just picked up ten million over at Tyndall before the fiscal year ended in Soul Source. I got you. Again, I'm not saying um I'm afraid to leave the state of Florida because I don't mind traveling. Of course, you know, I'm still young, whatnot. I don't mind going out to the west coast, whether it be Nevada, Arizona, no, no, no. California. You don't have to go that but, far. There's no reason. Well, I'm just saying, just in case. Okay, yeah, just, but you don't have to go that far. Yeah. Nah, you don't okay. go that far. You don't gotta go that far. Stay here. Stay right. I mean, listen, Tendo, when I, we went to a conference earlier this year, beginning of the year, and mm -hmm. we literally, they said, because of all the hurricanes the last several years, Tendo Air Force Base, Eglin Air Force Base, they had so much work that the Army Corps of Engineers had to have five different Army Corps of Engineers to give out the amount of work because one group could not handle putting together the amount of proposals and requests and solicitations to handle all of the work they were giving out. Wow, that's awesome. So they're dividing up the work between five different Army Corps of Engineers locations for the stuff here in Florida and the panhandle. Okay. You don't have to go nowhere. <laughs> Matter of fact, I, I look, I'm going to throw Maria under the bus. Maria went to D.C. <laughs> Maria went to D.C., hooked up with one of our podcast guests and another guy, and he told her he could give her millions of dollars of work at Tyndall Air Force Base. <laughs> Maria, <laughs> he told her he could give her the work. Construction. So it's out there. It's out there. It's out there. Okay. It's out there. So, A lot of stuff coming out. A lot of stuff coming out. So. Awesome. All right. All right, then. All right, um, see you Tuesday. You got it, man. Thanks again. All right. Be good. Thanks for coming on. Anytime. All right. Later. Hello, everyone. Eric Coffee here, and I know what you're thinking. Eric, how do I get more? And that's why we created GovConEDU.com. So visit us over at GovConEDU.com. That's the platform that I've created where I've curated more than a dozen plus courses on wide ranging topics from staffing, janitorial, to IT. We're discussing how to become a prime subcontractor, how to get involved, how to do simplified acquisition, what is a debriefing, what does that look like? I've taken all of my best of the best work that I've done and we put it into a collection of courses that are now being hosted over on the platform govconedu.com. So sign up today for one low cross subscription base and you can get access to more than a dozen plus courses.